Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. It is the first day of 2022 and I thought I'd have some fun and make some predictions in regards to this year. And I'll make 22 forecasts or predictions. Most of these are in regards to the economy or the stock market. Also make some predictions in sport, film and TV. And at the end of the year, I'll look back and see whether I was right or wrong. And more than likely, I am going to be wrong on the majority of these because it is actually quite hard to forecast the future, particularly when you're talking about the economy and the stock market. In my professional life, I'm a weather forecaster. And that is way easier than forecasting how the economy is going to perform, how the stock market is going to perform. So some of the things I will be forecasting or predicting in this video for this year are to begin with, I'll focus on looking at some economic factors, and these typically are the hardest things to forecast. We always see the Reserve Bank and economists that work for banks, that sort of thing, always gets always get these sort of things wrong. Interest rates, inflation, GDP growth by the end of the year, and so more than likely, I will be wrong, and I have no confidence in forecasting those three things. Also look at property prices through the rest of the year. And also, this is really hard to forecast too. Um, you can just see the sort of forecast banks have made over the last few years, and they've been totally wrong. Also look at what the NAB and CBA have forecast for property prices around Australia the next two years. I'll look at property prices in three cities, Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne. I'll focus on where I think the XJO might end up at the end of the year. And in regards to NASDAQ, I won't talk about where I think it might end up in terms of total. I'll talk about percentage change. Do I think it's going to go up or down during 2022? Now I'll discuss Bitcoin. I won't talk about where I think Bitcoin might end up at the end of the, of the 2022, but I will talk about what I think the major story around a Bitcoin will be during the year. Gold, where I think gold will end up by the year, and the price I think it might end up is a very important price. I'll talk about why uh, during that little section. And then the end of year share price for five companies, four Australian companies, and one internationally traded company, which is apparently the most popular internationally traded company for uh, Australian retail investors. Also talk about who I think will become the biggest company in the world by the end of the year. Right now it's Apple but will remain Apple for the rest of the year. And then I'll discuss China, in particular, focusing on Alibaba. We have seen the share price of Alibaba fall a lot this year. Will that continue in 2022, or will the share price turn around? I'll talk about what I think might be the best performing sector on the ASX in 2022, and then we'll have a look at the amount of IPOs in the year, because 2021 was a really popular year, for companies to list on the ASX, over 240, if I remember correctly. Also talk about iron ore, where that might end up, because it's been a volatile year in 2021. Will that continue in 2022? And then whether I'll discuss whether I'm bullish or bearish on energy. And then electric vehicles. One of the most popular areas for investors. Is that going to continue? I'll briefly discuss that, but the thing I want to discuss with electric vehicles is what I think will be the major story by the end of the year. And then I'll talk about acquisitions. And I think this will also be a major story when it comes to the ASX by the end of the year. Then I'll talk about some areas where I think there could be a little bit of hype this year. There's always a little bit of hype which can cause share prices of some companies to go through the roof. And then we'll talk about the skyscraper effect. Hands up, who's ever heard of that? And I do think by the end of the year, this could be a story you might be hearing a little bit about. And then on to some non-economic and market uh, predictions. Sport, quite a few sport predictions here. Talk about the NRL, AFL, Grand Finals, uh, FIFA World Cup, ICC World Cup, uh, NBA and Super Bowl predictions. Uh, biggest movie of the year in terms of box office and open. And then there is a reason I have made that distinguishing uh, and that will become apparent when I talk about those predictions. And then also, the biggest TV show of the year. Let's start talking about interest rates first of all, which is probably one of the most intriguing economic uh, factors 
we'll be looking at in 2022, particularly around whether the Reserve Bank of Australia raises interest rates this year. Uh, they're still a bit hesitant, still a bit stubborn in regards to uh, forecasting or expectations in regards to raising interest rates, even though a lot of other countries around the world are starting to raise the interest rates to fight inflation. And we've also seen the Fed. Um, they're talking about, um, they've gotten rid of the word transitory, first of all, and they are also expecting to raise interest rates and pulling back stimulus as well. So I don't think, even though the Reserve Bank in Australia is still sort of mentioning 2024 as the time where they expect to raise interest rates, I don't think that that will play out, and the market also agrees. The question then is, how many times did they raise interest rates this year, and to what level? And I'm going to say they will raise interest rates twice this year to 0.5%. I think the first time they'll raise will be to 0.25%, and they'll raise it towards the end of the year to 0.5%. Now, I could be completely wrong, uh, but I do think we are more than likely heading towards a uh, scenario where we will see interest rates rise earlier than the Reserve Bank are forecasting. Inflation, transitory or not. Now, I don't think inflation is going to be as bad as some of the more bearish people out there. Uh, I've heard some people talk about, well, I won't say hyperinflation, but I do think they are going a little bit overboard. We have seen some significant supply side issues. But then on the flip side, a lot of people who believe that inflation will go back to like 2% per year because the supply side issues are resolving themselves. But I think they're losing sight of the fact that wages are starting to increase around the world as well because we do see a deficit of supply in labor and that will have an effect on inflation. And if that isn't resolved, that could be the key factor behind inflation being a little bit higher than some of those bullish or bears are expecting. So what do I think in regards to inflation? I have no idea. Um, you could just pick a number out of the hat and more than likely you are going to be wrong. So what I've done is chosen 4.1%. Now the last figure we did see for Australia was 3% for the September quarter. The previous quarter was 3.9%, but that was also including uh, the deflation period we saw during the start of the COVID-19 period. I do think inflation is going to be a little bit higher than the Reserve Bank is going to be forecasting. And I think it's going to be remaining stumbly high for the next few years at least. I do think inflation eventually will become a problem because of labour issues, because we aren't procreating enough. There's not enough people entering the um, workforce. And that's one of the issues right now. A lot of people are retiring, particularly in the United States, um, are short of retirement age. But because of stimulus, they have a lot of money because of increased assets, uh, price, that sort of thing. And we've seen a large proportion of those people near retirement in the next five years have decided, well, this is the time to retire. And that's one of the reasons we are seeing a shortage of labor right now. And if that does continue, we will see pressure on inflation. And if we do see pressure on inflation, that goes back to interest rates more than likely will need to rise. GDP growth, another one of these economic factors where you could just pick a number and more than likely you are going to be wrong. Uh, and this seems to be the story over the past five or 10 years, whenever the Reserve Bank releases their forecast in regards to anything like inflation, GDP growth, employment, they always seem to be wrong, in particular to wage increases. They're completely going over the top uh, over the past 10 years. They've always been thinking that wages will increase at a far greater rate than they actually do. So what do I think GDP growth will be by the end of the year? Well, 4.7%. No doubt this we will see GDP grow this year, but once we go into 2023, 2024, I think we will see GDP growth really become stunted, and there is a possibility and this is just a possibility, not a definitely, because there's no definite when we're talking about the future, that we could be seeing a bit of stagflation once we go into 2023, 2024. And stagflation is something we don't want. For those who don't know, stagflation is just when you have high inflation, but very little growth, if any growth at all. And that is not the sort of economic environment we want to be living in. Apologies to those who live in Perth, Adelaide, Hobart, Darwin, Canberra, 
or even some of the more minor cities like Newcastle um, because I won't give any forecasts for those cities in this video but what I'll do is give a forecast for three cities that have actually lived in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. Now NAB and CBA have already given out their forecasts for not only 2022 but also 2023. They remain bullish for this year but extremely bearish for 2023. NAB is forecasting 5% rise this year, CBA 7%, while both are forecasting a significant drop in property in 2023. NAB at 4% and CBA at 10%. Now, look at those forecasts with a bit of grain of salt because they have been completely wrong the last few years when it comes to property prices. So what are my expectations, and I use that word loosely, for Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane? Melbourne up 3.5%. Sydney 4.1% and Brisbane 6.5%. I sort of agree with NAB and CBA. I do think this year will be fairly good for property again, but as we go through 2023-2024, because property prices have increased by a fair amount over the past few years, I do think we need a bit of time where the property just needs to breathe. It needs to go sideways or even down a little bit uh, before we go for the next upswing in about four or five years' time. Now, what do I expect for the Australian stock market? So we'll focus on the XJO. It finished 2021 at 7,444.6. I did put a little bit of time into this, and originally I was going to go uh, for a total at 7,800. Then I was even thinking maybe the biggest story about the Australian uh, stock market is that we will see the XJO breach 8,000 this year. But in the end, I've decided that we're going to see a down year. So... At the end of the year, 2022, the XJO will be down a very small amount at 7,410. And what this will do is to tell a lot of these uh, new retail investors that stock markets don't always go up. Sometimes a stock market will go down. Before I talk about what I think the NASDAQ will do in 2022, let's just go back the last three years to see how the NASDAQ has performed. In 2019, the Nasdaq was up 35.2%. In 2020, it was up 43.6%. And in 2021, it was up 22.1%. I would be hesitant to say the Nasdaq will perform like we have seen the last three years. And I would say, based off probability, the most likely scenario the Nasdaq will, or how the Nasdaq will perform in 2022 is down. So how much will it be down? I'm saying it's going to be down only 5%. I wouldn't be surprised to see it down 10, 15%. But on the flip side, I wouldn't be surprised to see the NASDAQ have another up year, maybe 10%, and then we'll have the significant down year in 2023. I've never really discussed Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in this video, but over the past few years, particularly during 2021, I have done a fair bit of research in this space, and I can definitely see the bull case for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And there is a portal level that Bitcoin, I think, has a potential to breach this year, and that level is $100,000. And if it does breach that, I think that will be a significant milestone moving forward for not only Bitcoin, but also cryptocurrency. I also think there's going to be a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies out there right now that will go to zero, but Bitcoin, Ethereum, those sort of um, cryptocurrencies, I think will be safe over the long term. In August 2020, the price of gold reached $2,080 per ounce. And ever since that record high or near record high, the price of gold has been falling back, but has been consolidating over recent times. And there is a possibility it looks like gold price could be moving into at least a short-term uptrend. I'm a little bit bullish when it comes to gold in 2022. So I do think gold will reach a new high and get over that 2080 we saw in August 2020 and finish the year at $2,115 per ounce. Now let's have some fun forecasting some of the end-of-year share prices for four ASX companies and one internationally traded company, Tesla, which is apparently the most popular internationally traded company for Australian retail investors. CBA, I do think, will be down 
for the year from $101 to $88.51, probably a little bit too precise there. There is no way you can be that precise forecasting a share price for a company in a year's time. CSL, on the other hand, will go up from $290.72 to $305.22. No rhyme or reason behind that forecast, but share price of CSL has been going sideways or consolidating over the past two years, and eventually we will start to see the CSL share price rise because it is still growing at a fairly good rate for its size. Tesla will go down. Now, I probably shouldn't say will, but I do envisage Tesla share price going down because of the massive bull run it has experienced over the past two years, and it will fall from $1,057 to 852 um, One of the reasons behind the decrease in Tesla share price is because I do think tech stocks will be under pressure, interesting, increasing interest rates, and there will be another reason for Tesla's decrease in share price, and I'll talk about that later in the video. Novonix, one of the most popular companies out there among retail investors. It is uh, the best performing company in the group portfolio, has done a stellar job in 2021. And a lot of times you'll see the best performing companies one year will not perform the next year and vice versa. A lot of times you'll see the worst performing companies one year will become really good performers the next year. So I do think because of the stellar performance of Novonix in 2021, it has to take a breather. I would not be surprised at one point during the year, Novonix share price will get above $15. But I will do think there is potential. We might see a little bit of pressure, a little bit of selling coming through the year, and the share price to fall from $9.19 to $8.35. Best performing company, or one of the best performing companies on the ASX this year, will be A2 Milk. I'll just decrease this a little bit. There we go. It has been under significant pressure to the share price over the past two years. Uh, and as I mentioned with Novonix, sometimes the worst performing companies one year will become the best performing companies the next year. Now, A2 Milk has the potential, particularly when we start to see uh, international travelers coming back to Australia, international students coming back, that the A2 Milk uh, business will start to improve and potentially will start to accelerate in its performance. And that's why I think A2 Milk will more than double in share price over the next year and finish 2022 at $11.65. What will be the biggest company in the world by the end of 2022? Right now, January 1st, 2022, the biggest company in the world is Apple at $2.9 billion market cap. Microsoft is second at $2.5 billion. Alphabet is third at $1.9 billion. Saudi Aramco uh, fourth at $1.9 billion. Amazon at $1.7 billion. And the only other company with valuation above $1 billion, Tesla at $1.1 billion. When I look through the next year, I do think it will be a fight between two companies, Apple and Microsoft. Uh, they're not much difference between the two. Now, originally, I was thinking of Apple maintaining its lead as the biggest company in the world. They do have a few products they will be releasing this year, which would or could um, increase their revenue, increase their cash flow during the year. But I'm going to go a different direction. I'm going to go Microsoft. No reason behind this. I just think that Apple share price has really taken off the last few years. And even though the share price has taken off, the, lar the large majority of the increase in share price is because of multiple expansion. We have seen some financial expansion, uh, but we need to see the financial expansion to really justify the current valuation for Apple. On the other hand, Microsoft has been performing really well when it comes to their financials. And I think that financial performance of this company will continue in 2022. Will either of these companies get to a valuation of $3 billion? I think at one point this year, one of these companies will get to a valuation of above $3 billion, but whether they finish the year at $3 billion or above uh, remains to be seen. I am a little bit bearish when it comes to that. There are a lot of things I could discuss when it comes to China, but China itself is very unpredictable. And um, because it's not very unpredictable in what they might do, uh, trying to forecast the share price of some of the companies there is really hard to do as well. But I'm going to focus on Alibaba for this video because the share price of Alibaba has fallen from a high of $272.32, which was reached on 17th of February. And that high I'm talking about 
was for 2021. But the current share price of Alibaba is $118.79. Yes, Alibaba's share price has fallen by more than 50% during 2021. So what do I think will happen to Alibaba in 2022? Originally, I was going to put up 50%. I thought this was going to be a great year for this company. Then I had a look at the chart, and there's a lot of negative sentiment right now when you look at the chart for Alibaba. So that negative sentiment has to play out. And sometimes when you have a lot of negative sentiment in regards to a company, it can take a while for that negative sentiment to move away, to drain out. And that's why the share price needs to consolidate for a long period of time. So I would not be surprised to see Alibaba's share price fall below $100. But what I'm gonna say right now is Alibaba's share price will be up but it won't be up much, only 5%, because we will see a period of consolidation for this company's share price. Best performing sector on the ASX this year. I thought long and hard about this one, and I ended up with healthcare. A few reasons behind that, and one of the reasons behind it is because of COVID-19 has negatively affected a lot of healthcare companies. I think we will see a massive rev out in those sort of companies. Now, there are other companies in the healthcare space who have benefited from COVID-19. So there is that factor as well. But I think overall, the healthcare sector will have a good year in 2022. And in fact, it will have the best year out of all the sectors. When it comes to IPOs, the ASX mentions that 120 is an average year. So you should expect about 120 IPOs per year. In fact, in 2020, there was only 114 because during the period between about February or March to June, July, there was only like two or three IPOs during that period because of what was happening with COVID-19. But we went from 114 IPOs in 2020 to 240 in 2021. Just recently, the other day, I went through all the December IPOs and there was a plethora. So we actually are seeing an acceleration in the IPOs right now. And that's gonna continue into 2022. Even though I think the overall market will be down, still a lot of bullishness when it comes to companies wanting to list on the ASX. And the total amount of IPOs will be 251. A quite a volatile year for iron ore. Uh, we've seen iron ore prices get above $200 for all the way down to $40. And we have seen the iron ore prices recently rally back up to 120. So a lot of ways this could move in the future, but I am a little bit more bearish on iron ore, and there is that potential. I think it could fall below $100 again. And so I'm gonna say that iron ore will finish 2022 below $100 per tonne. Now onto energy. Am I bearish or bullish when it comes to energy in 2022? And this was actually fairly easy for me because I am quite bullish when it comes to energy this year. I do think the consumption of energy and the demand of energy will grow quite considerably uh, during the year. So I do think if you had a good diversified portfolio of energy companies, uh, you actually do quite well in 2022. Electric vehicles are the future. Right now, that does seem to be true. But in saying that, we just don't know what new technology could be developed in the next year, next few years that could supplant electric vehicles in 10, 20 years. We just don't know at this point. But right now, electric vehicles are the future. And finally, the Australian people and the Australian government, well, I'm probably being a little bit fair, unfair on Australian people because they already know this, but the Australian government has been very slow to come to the electric vehicle party. And possibly in 2022, we will see some significant changes when it comes to electric vehicles Possibly some subsidies, some subsidies if you buy electric vehicles, that sort of thing, because it is badly needed. But I do think the biggest story this year will be towards the end of the year when it becomes apparent that VW Group will overtake Tesla market share by 2024. I think there is this perception out there that eventually the VW Group will become the biggest electric vehicle manufacturer in the world, apart from maybe a Chinese company or two. And when it will overtake Tesla, we'll be about three or four years down the road. But I think the significant inroads that VW Group will make this year, uh, it will be a big news story by the end of the year that it will overtake Tesla by 2024. 
and that will be significant for Tesla share price and also VW Group share price. Whenever you see stock markets on a run, you also see heightened activity when it comes to mergers and acquisitions. A lot of investment bankers love that sort of scenario because that's where they make a lot and lots of money. And I think one of the biggest stories this year is the amount of ASX 100 companies that will be acquired this year. And I'm going to say five ASX 100 companies will be acquired. I'm not sure what those companies will be, but I do think we're going to see a ramp up in mergers and acquisitions this year. And that's actually another sign we are potentially reaching a stock market top. Watch the hype. There's always hype in the markets. There's always a little sector, a little niche area that is hyped up to the max. Uh, we've seen lithium go through this twice in the past six or seven years, uh, 3D printing marijuana. So what some of the areas you might want to look out for uh, that it might be hype areas in 2022. The first one is Web3. The reason I'm saying Web3 is I hadn't really heard about Web3. I did know about it, but there was not much talk about Web3 up until a few months ago. And then all of a sudden, I started hearing about Web3 all the time. I listened to a lot of podcasts, and a lot of podcasts were talking about Web3. And that's telling me Web3 is getting out there. It's becoming a little bit more popular. People are doing a little bit more research. And I think this is the year where Web3 really becomes hyped up. Next one is 3D printing. Now, 3D printing was a hyped area five, six years ago, but it's coming back. Well, I won't say it's coming back. I think it has the potential to come back. And one of the reasons why 3D printing might be coming back, why it might be uh, getting a little bit more hype is because of automation. In fact, a lot of companies in the past uh, took their factories overseas to produce stuff. And with 3D printing, they won't have to do that. And the third area, just decrease that. The third hype area is anything to do with automation. Now, I've already talked about that one of the biggest problems, problems we're going to have in the future is a lack of labor. The supply of labor will be a problem, and that's when automation becomes highly important. So any company out there that can um, solve an automation problem for any company will be highly thought of. So look out for any sort of hype when it comes to automation, 3D printing, or Web3. Any companies in those sort of spaces. I've also left out visual, uh, virtual reality. I think that could be a hyped area as well. But for any company that are in those sort of areas, we might see a bit of a run on the share price at some point during the year. Skyscraper effects. Uh, hands up, whoever's heard about this. Now, this is um, an interesting economic indicator linking construction of world's tallest sky prices with the imminent onset of an economic recession. There's been papers written about this. But this is one of the things they look for for a possible economic recession in the near future. And I did hear from a third source that the world's second biggest skyscraper has been approved recently. And during this year, we will hear that the tallest building in the world will be built in the next few years. And this will be an indication for some people that we are at the top in the economic cycle and a recession might be coming. Now onto some sporting forecasts or predictions. And the first stop is the NRL and AFL Grand Final, two of the biggest winter sports in Australia. And unfortunately, uh, the premiership winning team in NRL will be the Sydney Roosters. I don't like that because I really hate the Sydney Roosters. When it comes to the AFL Grand Final, I think it's going to be a repeat. Melbourne Demons will win their second Grand Final. There was a big period where they didn't win anything, and all of a sudden they're going to win two in a row. So funny enough, we're going to see a Sydney team win and a Melbourne team win. Since I did live in the United States for over eight years, I have an appreciation for all American sports, including professional football, NBA, uh, NHL, uh, Major League Baseball, and all the college sports. But when it comes to my predictions, I'm going to focus on two sports, uh, the professional football or the Super Bowl and the NBA, because the Super Bowl is only a month and a half away 
in the NBA is more than halfway through the season. The Major League Baseball, they're in the offseason. Uh, NHL, my favorite team in that uh, competition, is the Buffalo Sabres, and they've been performing badly over the last few years, last five or even ten years, and I don't really want to talk about it. So let's just focus on the Super Bowl and NBA. With the Super Bowl, I'm going to pick the team that has been performing really well over the past seven to eight weeks. In fact, they've been they've gone on an unbeaten run after a slow start, and they were the losers of the Super Bowl last year. And that team is the Kansas City Chiefs. They will make it up and beat the Dallas Cowboys, the American team, in the 2022 Super Bowl. Very similar story for the NBA, and just like uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, this team lost the NBA championship last year, and that team is the Phoenix Suns. They're a fairly young team, and because they lost last year, they will learn a lot from that experience. They're performing really well this year. I think they will go one step further than they went last year, and Phoenix, uh, the city itself, will go bananas over the Phoenix Suns' victory in the NBA championship this year. There is a major international sporting contest being staged in Australia towards the end of 2022. And this is the ICC 2020 World Cup, which, if I remember correctly, this was postponed from last year because of the COVID-19. But even though it was postponed, they held another World Cup in the Middle East. And in that World Cup, Australia beat New Zealand. And New Zealand lost this major tournament. They also lost the one-day World Cup in Australia in England a few years ago, very close loss. Um, in fact, it was a count back based off how many sixes each team um, hit in that one game. So New Zealand have been very close to winning a major tournament in the last few years. And this tournament, being staged in Australia, is the tournament they finally win and claim the ICC World Cup for 2022. 2022 is also the year of the FIFA World Cup. Usually, the FIFA World Cup is held in like June, July, August, that time of year, uh, the typical off-seasons for the major European tournaments. But because this is a tournament is being held in Qatar, they're holding it in something like October, November, which is really odd time to hold the FIFA World Cup. I went through all the teams that would be, all the countries that would be favourite for this tournament, and there's no way I'm going to pick England, so automatically they're, you know, discarded. Brazil was a little bit too easy. Uh, France, a little bit too easy. Italy, yeah, I can see them winning. Germany, yeah, I can see them winning. Uh, Argentina, I was actually thinking about picking Argentina. But in the end, I decided to pick Belgium. This team has been unusually good the last five years, but they have not performed all that well in major international tournaments. And this is going to be the year for Belgium to win a major tournament, and they're going to be the 2022 FIFA World Cup champions. It's been about three or four years since I last went to the cinema because, to be honest with you, I find it really annoying watching the movies with total strangers who make a lot of noise, particularly when they eat or drink. So I prefer to watch uh, films in the comfort of my own home where I have complete control of distractions. So what is going to be the biggest film of 2022 in terms of box office? And I'm going to discard Chinese films because there's been a growing trend where Chinese um, films being released on the domestic market perform really well. In fact, their performance are comparable to Hollywood blockbusters. So what is going to be the biggest Hollywood blockbuster of the year? A lot of Marvel movies being released this year, a lot of sequels, maybe even prequels. A Top Gun Maverick, the new Black Panther, but I think and hope, hoping that the biggest film of 2022 is Thor Love and Thunder. Though I do hope that Thor Love and Thunder becomes the biggest film of the year, when more than likely it's going to be Black Panther or maybe one of the other Marvel movies. There is another film being released towards the end of the year that more than likely will blow all these films out of the water. Now, this film is a sequel to uh, one of the most successful movies of all time. And if there is a lot of hype in regards to the release of this movie, still one year away. And if the reviews start coming out and they're really good reviews, more than likely this is going to be an absolute phenomena. And of course, the movie I'm talking about is Avatar 2. These days, 
I prefer TV shows over film. Never used to be like that, but there's something about a TV show, particularly if it's a very high quality TV show, you get involved with the characters and that involvement can last many, many years. And it is said we're in the golden age of TV shows right now, simply because the amount of streaming services out there uh, just means these streaming services like Amazon Prime, Netflix, HBO, have to release high quality content to make sure the customers remain happy and remain subscribers. And this year, there is potential a massive TV show event will occur because of the movies this uh, TV show will or is derived from. And of course, from this one still, for those who know where this still comes from, it's the Lord of the Rings TV show. Even though it is from Amazon Prime, and I have been a little bit disappointed about some of the quality in Amazon Prime TV shows, I still think this has the potential to be one of the most significant TV shows being released over the last five to ten years. That's all I have for this 22 predictions for the year 2022. If you disagree with any of these predictions, I'd love to hear your thoughts on why, so leave in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.